I put TLS in the slides because that's what this is supposed to be about. Um, hi. But before we get into this talk, I would love all of you to think about some questions that I have that I never get to ask people, and this is a good place to ask them because I'm assuming that all of them, all of you here, interact with software in some way or the other, um, or at least interact in some way with the process of how software is built. So before we ever build a, or start building a new product, a software product in this case, but any product in reality, it is recommended that we do a threat modeling of the product. This involves getting the, the designer who designs different parts of the product, um, the, the engineer who is going to be involved in the process of implementing this, a security person, someone who knows crypto math, a cryptographer, or if you have a security engineer, um, them, and also a manager who's sort of managing this product. Um, all of these people, it is recommended that one get them all in a room before we start building a product and discuss uh, the product design, the plan, and sort of see uh, what are the assets we're trying to preserve. What are the important assets that we need to guard when building this product? What are the threats that could at any step of the, pro uh, of the process of building this, using this, um, basically think like an attacker, think like a hacker, and try to identify what weaknesses this plan has. So this is a, a, an overview of how threat modeling works. Um, most of the software methodologies that I've seen don't do this on a regular basis, sadly. Um, I am not going to force people to do this, but while I have all of you here in one room, I will ask you to think about this one question, one very important question. Is the product you are building making your users a threat to themselves? This question is even more important given the last couple of months. I feel like this a seemingly obvious question, if someone had asked me this last year, I would have been like, what do you mean? Obviously they're not. What, do you, what are you implying? What, what do you think I'm building? Another way to put this, is the most obvious way to use your product also the most insecure way to use it? This could be anything. Are you asking your user to give them, give you their email addresses? Are you asking them to create a password of some sort? Are you storing it? Are you asking your users to tell you something about their personal lives? And are you in any way having that information persist throughout your system? The answer to any, any question, any of the about questions, or if you can think of any similar questions, is yes. Then, then this is an important question that I, I hope and wish that everyone would consider before or do anything else. Um, and while you're taking a moment to think about that, I'll introduce myself. My name is Ashwini. I am a, an engineer living in San Francisco. I work at Eventbrite. And I also work on a project called TLS, uh, by CATLS, because we're really good with naming. It's a TLS 1.2 implementation uh, built in pure Python. More on that later. Uh, until then, you can maybe live in a sort of dread with that I'm rolling my own TLS and doing all the things everyone was told never to do. Um, about, I think this happened around the time that I think, uh, we were we were sprinting on Twisted. In fact, I used to work on Twisted a lot before I started. Uh, looking at TLS. We were, uh, PyCon is a conference that happens every year at uh, a different location every couple of years. Um, and there are, there are three days of talks that are followed by I think, three days of sprints where open source developers from all over the world, because this is basically the place where you get to meet all these people you interact with on the internet throughout the year, uh, actually meet a person. <coughs> So we were standing in front of a whiteboard, and I, I wanted to build state machines for a thing I've written in Twisted. And I was really focused on that. 
I had a couple of people who were building a state machine library, and I basically wanted their attention, and I wanted them to release a version of their library so that I could use it for my own thing. Um, and they weren't paying any attention to my thing. They were all cornered in uh, near this whiteboard and talking about this thing called TLS. And I was annoyed. I kept poking them. I, kept, I think I annoyed them back. And then in the end, the result was I started, I joined that group of people staring at the whiteboard. The problem we were discussing was we were looking at the implementation flaws in all of their DLS implementations that we've seen. And there was a common factor there. There were two things. One was that most of these implementations were trying to do network stuff, any stuff, network stuff in C. And uh, most of them were really hard to use. If, if I were a user that wanted to I'll have a slide later that will actually give you an example of this. But um, if I were, if I wanted to build a web application and if I wanted to use some sort of TLS implementation to secure it, it was really hard. I needed to know a lot about cryptography. There was no obvious, simple, and default way for me to do it. We, once we identified this problem, we realized that most of the most of the these hard bleed or most of the attacks that we hear about, there are very few of them are against the protocol itself. I'm not saying that crypto is perfect, math is perfect, the crypto math we have is perfect, I mean, but um, what I'm saying is that even before we get down to that level of uh, identifying things that are wrong, uh, there are a lot of problems with the implementations themselves in the protocol as it is designed. And trust me, the protocol is designed in a in a really smart way that is uh, given how hard the problem is to solve. So what if we had an implementation that would have better design decisions and was easier to use and did not try to do network programming and see? Um, these were the major uh, questions that we left the room with. Uh, the state machine library was eventually released the state machine library was eventually, another state machine library was eventually released. I think Glyph, uh, two months ago, uh, did the thing that I wanted to do that year. Uh, he rewrote something called Hostname Endpoint using Automat, and I think he gave a talk about that in the last meetup. So there we go, connecting the dots. So like I said, I let you live in that dread of me rolling my own TLS for a bit. Now I'm going to try to bring you out of that. Um, this project is not directed at cipher implementation. I do not know crypto math. I do not claim to be smart enough to know crypto math. And I will not try to implement crypto math yet. <laughs> it is indeed focused on a careful, uh, well-tested, or at least testable um, implementation of the network protocol parts of TLS. So the idea is um, there is another li library called cryptography, uh, by CS slash cryptography, because we are awesome with names, um, that uh, calls OpenSSLs, um, math things, OpenSSLs, primitives, OpenSSLs, crypto things, which really should be in C, which really should be what we really, everyone should be doing. And it takes that, and it Use, it helps Python programs call it or use it, which is awesome. Which, which is awesome, which is like basically, which makes my life really easy. And, or at least so I thought, like, I was like, okay, I, am, I don't know crypto math. Someone else has done that part for me. All I need to do is read this RFC that defines some sort of handshake, and I need to just translate that into code. How hard could that be, right? <laughs> okay. Um, so before before we go into what this library really is, let's answer that question. How how hard could that really be? Um, so TLS is a network protocol at um, at core at its core. It's used to if if some information is flowing through the internet and you want to encrypt it, and you want to combine it with some sort of authentication, you want to make sure it's confidential, make sure the integrity of the messages um, 
is safe and you want to make sure it's uh, the listeners and everyone involved are authentic, then you use something like DLS to secure that communication channel. Um, so the first and the most important part of TLS is the handshake. This is where a server and a client, Alice and Bob, me and you, um, whoever the users are, this is where the they decide on what sort of encryption they'll be using, what sort of algorithms they'll be using, and a bunch of other um, decisions and uh, configurations that go. So the first message is the client hello. The client initiates. Because I said network protocol, so there's going to be a client, there's going to be a server. Um, the client initiates a handshake with a hello message. Um, uh, these diagrams are not something I made myself. These diagrams are coming from an excellent book. I, I've used them so that I can recommend the book to you all. It's called Bulletproof SSL and TLS. It tells you everything you need to know as, as someone who writes programs that go on the web about TLS. So. Um, highly recommended, um, amazing book. It will let you know how broken things are and what you need to know about those brokenness. So there you go. Um, but yes, a bunch of things happen. Uh, the client sends a client hello, um, gives a list of things, ciphers that it supports. The server sends a server hello, picks one of those things. And again, I am giving a really, really like, a broad overview of this. I spent four months just understanding this handshake. So. Um, uh, there is a certificate message that the server uses to prove its identity to the client. There is a key exchange that happens to generate a secret um, that is later used to verify that all the messages are, are really what the messages look like when they were sent. Um, then there is this message is basically the teen cipher spec message is what they, the server and client send to each other to show that they've switched to an encryption mode. Now every, every communication from then on would be sort of exchanged <coughs> in an encrypted mode. Everything is um, safe, secure for some uh, value of that. But uh, uh, that aside, now we know what TLS is now. We all understand all of it. That's great. The first part, the, the hellos part, that involves a lot of decisions. There is, you need to decide on a protocol version. And uh, note that each step here has, I think, at least two white papers that you would find on the internet about how it was it was exploited in some way, sometime. If not exploited, at least how someone could exploit it in some way. And at least, I say at least two, but it's really like the best case scenario. So there are so many decisions that we need to make uh, by the end client and server. And now, I love this slide. This is my favorite slide ever. Um, I usually start out by asking the audience to read the code that is in the background. <laughs> and then there's like an awkward silence in the room every time I do this. And that awkward silence is really the state of security on the internet right now. And that is why this is my favorite slide. So the code in the background is the code you would need to instantiate an open SSL client. I took this from its uh, I think official documentation, or at least at the time of, that I created it, I don't know if it has been updated. I didn't get time to check before the stock. And it is not, it is not a great API. It, it's not just a really verbose and crappy API. It's also, uh, it, so the, the reason it's bad is that it makes you choose your own settings. And the reason it's bad to have users choose their own settings is that when you do that, you are letting them make bad decisions and choose bad settings. And you're making it hard for applications to upgrade to better security if and as it shows up. Um, that is to say what is secure today will not, may not be secure two years from now, five years from now, or even a month from now. And it's really hard for us to upgrade that or have people change that. If, you just let them choose their own settings without providing any defaults. So this could be so much better. Um, encrypting things on the internet should not be this difficult. It should be simple, obvious, and really easy. Um, so that is where 5 CNTLS um, takes its basic tenets from. 
it, uh, it aims to provide an easy to use API. The API will be very user friendly. The API, and when I say will be, I mean that we haven't gotten to a point where we get to actually have users see the API and test it. It's still working for us, so I cannot claim that it is easy to use because it's, it doesn't exist really yet. Um, and the, the idea is that well, a lot of a lot of the reasons why OpenSSL makes you use all of these settings is that because really the 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 users on the internet are so diverse that all of the settings that it claims to support, there is like for all the settings that it claims to support, there is at least some uh, area of the internet that will use it. So if I just say that, hey, that, that is weak security, I, I'm not going to support it, or I'm not going to let my user choose it, I am, by default, uh, leaving that user group out of, my, of the people who can secure things on the internet. So um, this will also expose more flexible lower level APIs, but they will be clearly separated from the default APIs that people could use. It will have secure APIs. It will have strong opinions about what is secure, what is not, and it will not let the users be doing on time. So, okay. Okay. Uh, yes. So it will not allow downgrading to weaker security. It will not allow disabling of security features that are really important. And while you're saying this, um, I do want to say that this project is about providing secure implementation. I am not doing any crypto math. I trust OpenSSL to have done the crypto math or any other library out there, honestly. I, all I'm saying is that this is a new way to implement things, the networking part of it. So um, I was going to go a lot more detail into parsing of the messages and about state machines um, and how that can be used to do um, stuff for TLS, but I think we're running out of time, so I'll just quickly go through these slides. Um, a well-designed protocol has messages need, that need to be parsed. Um, by that, I mean, given some bytes, you want to know, are these bytes a valid message? And uh, TLS, Bikes here, TLS uses declarative parser to answer these questions. Um, it specifies what a valid message looks like and then maps it instead of sort of partially going through the the series of bytes that you get and then discarding the message of, or rejecting the message if at some point it comes uh, it comes across a point of failure. This is how um, this is a good way to say that heartbeat could have been avoided if declarative parsing was used. Um, so next is the processing part. Any valid uh, protocol needs to have some some messages will be valid, that will be valid for a state where it can accept those messages. If I'm sending a finished message right after a client had a message, something is wrong. I missed some facts. And um, I'm using, or if I see a TLS is using explicit state machines for that, which is, again, a good way to define all the valid states that we can go to from any given state. And that is all I have. This is where you can check the project out. Uh, this is me on Twitter. Um, I'm also here, so you can come talk to me. <laughs> and um, this is open source. We are, we are happy to have more collaborators work on this. If you think you want to solve this problem of usable security being available to everyone out there, help me out, help Mark out, both of us work on this. And all the other people here have also contributed in some form or the other. So thank you for listening to me.